the flesh, all that be clean shall be eat, shall eat thereof. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain to the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from the people. You didn't eat of the sacrifice if you were unclean. By the way, the priests were consecrated. That didn't mean they couldn't be defiled. Now we have some friends out there who say, once saved, always saved. We're consecrated, we're clean, we're never going to be defiled. Oh, yeah? The Old Testament priest could, and I submit to you, the New Testament priest could too. And the sacrifice that pertains to the New Testament priests, that New Testament priests get to eat of, <clears throat> is the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> you think about this, friend. Christ is our sacrifice. He's our sacrifice, Ephesians 5 and verse 2. He's a picture of the sacrifices of the Old Testament. Walking in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself as an offering for us, as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. He's our sacrifice. He's our Sin sacrifice, our sin offering. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. When he came into the world, God gave him a body for that sacrifice. But notice, let's come on down to verse 12. Every priest, verse 11, every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. He was the sin sacrifice for mankind. He was a sin sacrifice for mankind. He was a sacrifice that was without leaven. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. He is our sacrifice. And I tell you this, friends, only priests can partake of this sacrifice. He's our sin sacrifice. He's our peace sacrifice. He's an unleavened sacrifice. And only priests get to eat of it. And we partake of this sacrifice upon the first day of every week. But it only pertains to the priests. You see, when you come to our assemblies, we've had individuals get upset because they're not offered the Lord's Supper. You're not a priest. You're not a priest. You're not a spiritual priest. You're not a priest in the house of God. God wants you to worship him in spirit and truth. But if you will be a worshiper that God wants to worship, if you'll do what God says you need to do, you can worship God. But until then, there are some things that only a priest can do. And you shouldn't expect a deity to do them. We're not trying to be hard or difficult or cold or mean or whatever, cruel. But we understand that God has determined that certain people get certain privileges and responsibilities based upon their relationship with him. And we want you to be a member of the body of Christ. We want you to be part of this spiritual household so that you can partake of these spiritual sacrifices and spiritual blessings. You can do the things that are pertaining to the priest. But until then, see, you're not a priest. Matt, go ahead and put the phone numbers up. <clears throat> Please. Now, friends, we want you. See, we want, we want you to be a part of the church of Christ. But these are things that are only pertaining to the priest. Now, can't you see that God set up a system under the Old system, under the Old Testament, a priesthood that was a shadow of things to come. Hebrews chapter 10. The law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comer there unto perfect. The system that God put in place was a picture, was a shadow of things to come. And God said only priests 
Only priests are going to deal with things pertaining to me. The holy, the holy things. Certain priests were to carry the tabernacle. Certain priests were to take it down. Certain priests were to charge the instruments. Certain priests were in charge of the sacrifice and so forth. But even then, those people who were outside, just the people, they didn't dare. They didn't dare suppose that they could offer something to God without going to the priest. See, the priest had to be involved. But under the new system that God has set forth, he says everybody can be a priest. Everybody can be a priest in the... under the new system. Everybody can be a spiritual priest. A spiritual house. A holy priesthood. Offering a spiritual sacrifice to God. Everybody can be that. <clears throat> a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. These are the individuals that God wants to worship him. And friends, you can be one too. You know, when you start to think about <clears throat> God making a distinction between individuals who can and cannot worship him. Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't it make sense for God to say, I want someone who is consecrated. I want someone who is sanctified to come nigh to me. You see, that's what God said about the Old Testament priests. They had to be sanctified. They had to be cleansed. They had to be wearing the right kind of clothing. And then they had to be consecrated as priests before they could ever partake or be involved in, participate, before they could ever participate in the daily sacrifices and the daily administration of the workings of the Lord. Aaron himself had to be clothed. He had to be cleansed. He had to be consecrated. Leviticus chapter 8. You say, you didn't just walk up and say, well, I think I'm going to serve the Lord today. No, you had, to, you had to be someone that God said you uh, had to be in order to worship him. So doesn't it make sense that today God would say, I don't want just any Tom, Dick, and Harry coming up and offering me worship. I want individuals who will sanctify themselves, who will separate themselves from the world, then they can come and worship me. And that's why we're saying, friends, these things only pertain to the priest. Now, if you noticed, we just went through the five acts of worship. The Old Testament priests, see, they were teachers. They were singers. They had an obligation to give. They prayed, offered up incense, and <clears throat> they ate some sacrifices. And the New Testament priests are the same way. They have the privilege of teaching, of singing, of giving, of praying, and partaking of the Lord's Supper. You see, don't be upset with us. We just understand that God has taught us to make a distinction between right and wrong, <clears throat> between good and evil, between holy and unholy. And if we don't make a distinction between holy and unholy, then why not just say anything goes? You see, when people, when people get upset because we're making a judgment and they... And they say that we're, you know, uh, judging individuals falsely or incorrectly. They don't understand that God wants us to put a difference between right and wrong, between good and evil. But that's why you have people that are, have such a hard time with us when we talk about individuals who run pubs and clubs and bars and casinos and then turn around and say, but I worship God on Sunday. You have a you ha you're having a tough time making a distinction between holy and unholy. You're having a tough time making a righteous judgment between things that God says are good and what God says are evil. But that's our job, is to teach you God's word so that you can help make that distinction. So you can help make that distinction between right and wrong, good and evil. We want you to, we want you to be a, <clears throat> a consecrated priest. Now, notice this. These sacrifices, again, that we just mentioned, they're only offered by a consecrated priest. 
But if you would be sanctified and if you would be consecrated, you could be a priest. God would put you in the priesthood. No one's going to vote on you. No one is going to uh, look at you and say, well, I think we're going to have to have a vote on see if you can be a priest or not. So you don't have to be of a certain tribe like under the old system. You don't have to be of, of the tribe of Levi. All you have to be is someone who's willing to submit to God's will. Peter said, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. 1 Peter 3 and verse 15. Friends, do you know what that means to sanctify the Lord God in your heart? To sanctify means to set apart. It means to set apart the Lord God in your heart. That is, sanctify Him as Lord and God. And when you sanctify, when you sanctify God, you're saying, I'm going to submit to His will. Now, if you don't want to do what God says, then don't expect God to accept you as a true worshiper. He's not going to accept you as a true worshiper if you're not willing to submit to what his will is. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Now, when Nadab and Abihu refused to sanctify the Lord, it was because they disobeyed him. Leviticus 10 and verse 10. Or excuse me, Leviticus 10 and verse 2. There went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. They offered strange fire before, the, before God. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and I will, and will be glorified, and the people, and before all the people will I be glorified. If you don't sanctify God by obeying Him, just ask Nadab and Abihu you what happened. You see, if you sanctify God, that means you obey Him. And if you obey Him, guess what God gets? God gets glory from among the people. If you will sanctify God and say, I'm going to leave these churches that a man built that you can't find in this book. I'm going to leave all these man-made religions. I'm going to get right back to the book. I'm going to sanctify God in my heart. You know what you'll do before all your friends and family? You'll glorify God. God will be glorified because you will do His will. You see? If you, if you will do what God says, God gets the glory. It's not that you're doing it for personal glory or personal fame. You're doing it because God wants you to. And that's when God gets the glory. Notice in, in Luke 7, verse 29, all the people that heard him, talking about John the Baptist, and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. If you'll do what God says, you'll, you'll bring glory to God's name. God will be glorified in you if you'll simply do what God says. And here's what God says. God says if you will hear the word of God, and believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you're on your way. That's the first step in being consecrated as a priest. That's your first step. Acts 15, verse 7, Peter said that God made choice by him, by his mouth. Men and brethren, you know a good, how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Friends, I'm doing my, my best to inform you what God wants from you so that you can be a sanctified and consecrated priest in the spiritual priesthood of God. You have to hear this word and believe that it is indeed the gospel. And your belief, your belief will result in your obedience. It'll result in you repenting of your sins. Repenting of your sins. Acts 17, 30. In Acts 17, verse 30, Paul said that repentance 
is a command. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is to turn after knowing. Now, friends, if you know that when you worship God, you're not worshiping Him the way He says to worship, and you know you're worshiping Him in a church He never told you to get into, and you know that you haven't obeyed the gospel like God says you must obey, why don't you repent? Why don't you turn? Turn after knowing that. Why don't you come to the church of Christ, become a member of the church of Christ? You see? Repent. Turn after knowing. Now, one thing about repentance is repentance demands <clears throat> bringing forth fruits meet for repentance. That is evidence that you have repented or that you are repenting. Acts 26 and verse 20. Paul said, He shared first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. What are you going to do? What are you going to do as a work meet for repentance? Evidence that you're repenting? How about confessing? How about confessing not your sins, but confessing your faith in Christ? The eunuch in Acts 8, verse 36, asked Philip, asked Philip, See, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chair to stand still. And they went down both into the water, and Philip baptized him. Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. You see, it was a confession that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's not just enough to stop there. I know the Bible says with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10. But that's not where it stops. That's not the end of it. Salvation comes from God when you're baptized for the remission of sins. Acts 2, 38. Acts 2 and verse 38. Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, repentance and baptism go together. And remission of sins comes after baptism. It never comes before. Salvation, remission of sin never comes before baptism. Jesus said in Mark 16, Mark 16 and verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Salvation always comes after baptism. Now, upon you being baptized, notice this, the blood of Christ is what cleanses you. Colossians 2, 11 and 12. Faith in the operation of God. Faith that God will do His part if you'll do your part. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised Him from the dead. This is not a work of man. This is the work of God. The operation of God. God. This is where God works. And this is where God puts you in contact with the blood of Christ. You're baptized into his death. And it's the blood that consecrates you. It's the blood that sanctifies you. It's the blood that makes it possible for you to be a priest. Thus, you can then participate be engaged in all of the works or the, the sacrifices that the priests are involved in. You can know that your songs of praise, your spiritual sacrifices of God are reaching up to heaven. You know that God is, is hearing your prayers, that he's accepting your prayers. 
you know that you're not bound under the yoke of bondage when it comes to tithing, you can give a free will offering. You can be a teacher of the word, the truth. You can help spread the gospel that will free others. You see, you can have the privilege of partaking of the Lord's Supper every first day of the week with all the other saints, spiritual priests in the body of Christ. See, that's the blessings that you have. You see? And again, we're not, we're not saying we're exclusive in, in the sense of excluding people other than we just know that God has said, this is the kind of people that I want to worship me. So why don't you just obey God? It's not, it's not something that you can't do. It just comes down to, will you do it? It's not a matter of, can you? It's just a matter of, will you? Jesus said, whosoever will. If you will be obedient to the will of God, then you certainly can be a priest in the spiritual kingdom of God. What's hindering you? You know, we put up our phone numbers and our contact information uh, for, for your benefit. That is, we want you to know that you can reach us if you need us. And I wish you would. Here's my email address, wordfromthelord at gmail.com. Here's my phone number, 276-340-2653. Mailing address. If you want to reach, if you're in Martinsville, in the Martinsville area, 823 Starling Avenue, I preached there this morning, as a matter of fact. There's a brethren there who will help you and assist you, do whatever they can for you if you'll just let it be known. Folks in Danville, same way. There's a brother in Danville that I know right now, if you said you're in Danville <clears throat> and you wanted someone to come out and study with you, I've heard him call up on these programs before and say, here's my number. They're, they're out there. We're out there. You see? Because we want to be of service to you. We don't want to be seen as, as a group over here that's we're all by ourselves and we don't want you part of us. No, we want you part of us. See, we're, not, we're not limiting membership. That's not our job. Our job is to increase membership in the kingdom of God. We're trying to spread the borders. We hope that you'll be willing to let us be of service to you. All our information is free. Friends, I know you can see a difference in the church of Christ. I know you can see a difference in the people that are on this program and bring you programs like a word from the Lord and what does the Bible say? Because you see that we're never asking for your money. We never impose upon you. We're simply wanting to study God's word with you. There's folks in Mayadan that we're studying with. We've got a number of individuals who have, who have been obedient to the gospel in Mayadan. We're, we're going all over. Why? Because we want to be of service to you. You see, the priests, the priests of old were servants. That's exactly what their job was. Their job was to deal with things pertaining to God for their brethren. For mankind, we want to be of service to you in things pertaining to God. We try to help people out physically, but our greatest desire is to help you out spiritually, to make an impact on your life by helping you understand what the will of God is. If we can be of service to you, we want to do so. We're going to close. We're going to wrap up. I don't know uh, if there's a they have a tent promo anymore. Uh, but I, I do want to remind you of this, that in uh, October 20th at Mount Cross Road uh, in, in uh, Danville, this is, when, this is where the tents are set up. I think everybody knows where Leggett's, I think it's Leggett's Western Ware is. Mount Cross Road come down. It's between Mount Cross Road, uh, Piedmont Road, and uh, I guess Riverside Drive. 
If you go there like you're going toward the mall, going toward Walmart, you'll see it. It's on your left there if you're going toward Walmart. On your right if you're coming from Mount Cross Road down back in toward uh, uh, Riverside Drive. But Leggett's Western Wear, October 20th is when the tent meeting starts. Hope you'll come out and be with us. I know they've been knocking doors in Danville and uh, getting ready for that. So we hope that you'll uh, take the time and the opportunity to come and, and uh, be a part of that uh, great event. Until next time, friends, we, we certainly hope that you will uh, let us be of service to you in any way we can. Until next time, thank you for watching. And always make sure that you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again.